George here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about the five most compatible fish that I believe, community fish, uh, that will work with discus fish. Now I have arranged these five in no particular order. Uh, they're just five that I've had experience with and ones that I like and have used in my own tanks and think that they will work for you as well. So any number of uh, fish will do that, but I have chosen these five out of, like I said, my own experience, and I would like to share that with you today because I think it's important that when you are making your discus tank into a community tank that you are choosing the correct fish and choosing fish that are not fin nippers, that are not crazy fish that are running through your tank. Discus fish are a calmer fish and do not like a lot of movement in the tank. And so therefore, I chose the five that I did for those reasons. Now, it happens to be that all five of these are in the Tetra family. And that is not something that I purposely set out to uh, put this list together on it just happens to be that my experience is is that the tetra uh, in the smaller species and more um, docile uh, part of that species work really well with discus fish so there's nothing hidden in here that suggests that I have a preference uh, just for tetras uh, I'm sure there are plenty of other fish out there that would work really well with discus, but I like the five that I chose, and I'm going to uh, kind of give you that list from the uh, five down to one, and that doesn't mean that anywhere in there that I'm choosing one over the other. It just happens to be that I'm just mentioning them in the order of the way I feel uh, they best fit with discus tanks. Now the very first fish that we're talking about is the Ember Tetra. The Ember Tetra is an absolutely beautiful little fish. The gold color really stands out in a discus tank. The great little schooling fish or shoaling fish. Uh, they're not tight schoolers by any means. Uh, you'll see them in small groups around the tank. But again, a nice small fish, maybe an inch long at the most, and uh, they really, really work out very well with discus fish. They're a beautiful uh, addition to any tank, and I think that uh, if you're going to get Ember Tetras, make sure you get a school that's big enough for a 50, 75, or 100 gallon tank, whatever you happen to have. Uh, I would say 25 to 35 of these fish uh, it would be a great number uh, along with your discus fish and of course your cleanup crew like your uh, Corydoras, your Siamese algae eaters and so forth. And we'll get into that a little bit more later in the video here. But Ember Tetra is the number five fish on my list here. Number four on that list is the Rummy Nose Tetra. This fish is an absolutely beautiful fish and they are amazing schooling fish. If you've ever watched Rummy Nose Tetra move in sync with each other in a tank, it is a beautiful thing to see. And they will do the same thing in a discus tank with your discus fish. They, uh, they're really beautiful. Now these guys are, are a little bit longer than the Ember Tetra, so I would suggest to you that uh, if you're worried about room and stuff like that, you could get away with 20 to 25 of these in a small school. And like I said, they will be absolutely beautiful and fun to watch. And I think uh, one of the, the prettiest fish with that beautiful red nose and that uh, you know, famous flag tail of theirs that they're known for. Just absolutely beautiful fish. And I, I just can't tell you, uh, I myself have uh, several discus tanks and one of them has the Rummy Nose Tetra in there and it happens to be one of my very favorites. So uh, go out and find a supplier that's got good, healthy Rummy Nose Tetras 
If you can get wild caught, that's always best, and that's always best with any of these fish that I'm going to talk about. But make sure that they are healthy, make sure that they're a little bit bigger, they're not too small. Uh, a lot of the smaller ones are prone to disease. And uh, of course, all of these fish that I'm talking about today, we're gonna want to quarantine for three to four weeks before we ever add them in with the discus fish. But uh, make sure that you're getting a good quality stock of fish. And put a little Paragard in there or a little bit of salt and also uh, maybe some stress guard or something like that. One of those three to get these fish off to a good start and to keep situations like pick away. Uh, if you uh, quarantine these fish, which you should always do, it will give you an opportunity to watch their behaviors, look at their health overall, and uh, really get a, uh, a good understanding of the fish and what their needs are before you ever add them to your discus tank, because you don't want to add disease to your discus. That would be an absolute disaster. But uh, if you do this correctly, you're not going to have any problems, and you're just going to make your discus tank that much more pretty. Now, number three on this list is a fish that does not get a lot of attention for some reason, and I can't figure out why because I absolutely love them, and that is the black neon tetra. Beautiful bodies. You've got that onyx uh, sort of ebony looking body and the bottom and the top, and that little line of bluish neon green uh, that's in the center of their body that runs the full length of it which makes these fish just so elegant and I think they get overlooked because a lot of uh, folks out there who uh, look at tetras are looking for something with a little bit more color but if you look at these fish and you've got good clean water and uh, pristine atmosphere for them they're absolutely beautiful. Now, they will grow to about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, somewhere in there. So you want to make sure, uh, again, that you're thinking about the room in your tank, how much room you do have, and uh, make sure that uh, you get a school that's either big enough. Uh, again, I would say 25 to 30 of these as well. But just a beautiful little fish uh, that I, I love a lot. And like I said, it really doesn't get near the attention that it should get because um, I don't know why. I really don't know why. They, they seem to sell out every place I go of these fish. But when I talk to people about their favorite tetras, that is not one of the fish that comes up. But I think they're just absolutely elegant fish and they'll just make any discus tank look very stunning. Number two on my list is probably going to be a surprise to a lot of you because it is the common neon tetra. Now this fish has been around forever, it's been overbred, it's, um, you gotta be careful. If you're gonna go out and buy some of these, you wanna make sure you're getting them from a supplier that has either got uh, wild ones that you know are going to be in better shape and have not been bred so much uh, and uh, tank raised to the point where they have a lot of these problems. Uh, there is actually a disease named after them Neon Tetra disease, and uh, it's, it's, it's not a fun thing to watch these fish um, go downhill quickly. So you wanna make sure you get yourself a very good, healthy supply of these fish. And again, a small fish, uh, similar to the Ember Tetra, or I would say right between the Ember Tetra and the Black Neon Tetra in size and uh, maybe a school of uh, 30 to 35 of these as well would be a real good addition to any discus tank. Now, a lot of my tanks have sandy, dusty bottom of their tank, and I didn't say that actually as well as I would like to have said it, but the tank on the bottom is just dusted with a small amount of sand. I don't put large amounts of sand in there because I want to be able to clean it real easy and also remove it and replace it with new sand occasionally 
after several months because it freshens up the tank and makes it look that much nicer and takes a lot of uh, uh, debris out of uh, the tank or anything that might have settled at the bottom. Uh, hopefully you've got a cleanup crew, like I mentioned earlier, that takes care of a lot of that. But, you know, uh, over time it just builds up. And my recommendation is that if you have a, uh, just a small dusting of sand on the bottom that just adds a little bit of color to your tank, it's really beautiful. Or, like me, in some cases, some of my discus tanks have a bare bottom in there. And that is the easiest because it's just so easy to see. Uh, when you're cleaning uh, what needs to be taken out of the tank and so forth so um, if you do have that um, these fish are going to thrive a lot more and the tetras don't care um, as long as your tank is scaped correctly and has some uh, beautiful plants in there and uh, you want to be careful with that as well to make sure that you have plants that can handle the temperatures and we'll get into that in just a minute here but uh, they'll do just fine now number one number one on my list of the most popular and my favorite of all tetras that go in here and you guys are probably guessing it already is the cardinal tetra the cardinal tetra absolutely beautiful fish another fish that has been around for a very long time and heavily bred so be careful with that one also to make sure that you're getting a good supply of healthy fish or you're getting uh, live caught fish if you possibly can uh, sometimes that can be hard to do but I'm starting to see that more over the last four or five years on the market uh, we're starting to see the comeback of the wild cardinal tetra and I think that's an amazing thing because we're bringing new um, genes back into uh, what has been a very overbred fish for a very long time and they're just a beautiful fish that beautiful red uh, stripe along the bottom and the beautiful blue stripe along the top running from head to tail is absolutely perfect and it's it really is a beautiful beautiful fish to add to any discus tank and they're great schoolers and shoulders uh, again uh, much like uh, the uh, uh, all of the tetras except for the rummy nose tetra that I've talked about here you may see them in small groups around the tank or you may see them all together sometimes just zooming back and forth in the tank and uh, again really really beautiful fish to uh, enjoy in your tank and something that I would tell you uh, is my favorite again it's uh, it's just a, a I don't know it, it complements a discus tank so well because of the colors I think uh, if you have wild discus it's going to add some color to the tank because the wild discus as we know are not as bright and brilliant as uh, some of your hybrids out there, obviously. Uh, there are purists out there who only want wild discus and don't want anything but wild discus, and that's fine. I have a wild discus tank that I absolutely love, and uh, that is the one that I happen to have the cardinal tetrals in because it's part of their natural environment anyway. And uh, I just think that they just, they make something really, really stand out in the tank. Um, the Cardinal Tetra, which like I said, is my favorite of all of them. So thank you for joining me today. It's been a real pleasure talking to you about these five fish that I think are fantastic for any discus tank. And again, I don't want anyone to think that uh, I have chosen these for any particular reason in any order of favoritism or whatever. All of these are going to be great. They're not fin nippers. They don't have problems with those kind of issues and uh, you'll enjoy them. But I want you to also think about that when you're quarantining these fish, 
raise that temperature up because these fish are going to have to get used to a little higher temperature because you're keeping your discus fish between 82 and 86 degrees. Uh, your fish will adapt fine. Every one of these species of tetra that I have talked about will adapt just fine. And uh, just bump that up gradually in their quarantine tank over the three to four weeks they're in quarantine. And they will do fine transitioning over to the discus tank and not have any problems. And the last thing I want to talk about is uh, adding uh, some other fish to your tank, which are a good cleanup crew fish, which you should always have in your, your discus tank. Corydoras, uh, Siamese algae eaters. Uh, do not put plecos in a discus tank. There are problems that I've seen with that. I don't recommend it simply because they will sometimes try to latch themselves onto the slime coat sides of the fish and uh, they can they can cause some problems with that and create an environment where you get a infection uh, which can spread through your tank and cause real issues so be careful of what you're putting in your tank know these fish know any fish that you're adding and i was going to say also if you want to just put some splash of color into the tank and uh, that's really all you want to do add some epistogrammas in there. They come in every color you can imagine. Just be careful that your tank's large enough because they're territorial as well. Thank you for joining me. We will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.